lovelies, welcome back to the Geek Suite. I'm your host, the one and only Kidner Bean, and as promised, we are back for another brewing video today. So sit back, relax, pop open a cold one if you're of age, and be sure to hit that like and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our delicious Geek Suite content. Alrighty, my lovelies, so the beer that we're going to be brewing today is the White House Honey Porter. This is a recipe that Obama did. Uh, during his presidency and it uses White House honey, but uh, we don't have access um, To the White House honey farms. So we're going to be using some locally sourced honey for this brew as we go through the process throughout the day I'll be talking a little bit more about brewing with honey and why you should or shouldn't use it as a Ingredient in your brew depending on what outcome you're looking for. Okay, but for now Let's get started with our White House honey porter so I will be linking the link to the recipe from the whitehouse.gov website down below, and I'll be explaining the brew process in more layman's terms since brewing can be very uh, technically termed, especially if you're not in the brewing community, and even if you are, like our uh, local homebrew group, the SoCal Cerveceros, had a whole seminar on brewing with honey right before we did this, so we were super excited, so now we're like fully armed with knowledge on how to do this correctly. But even just asking our homebrew friends if they don't know that we don't know what sparging means, they'll just say, oh yeah, you just got to sparge. And we're like, oh, okay. Google. So uh, I'll be explaining things um, a little differently than the recipe will say, but just know that what I'm doing is what the recipe is asking for, or it's what the recipe is asking for, modified to what I have in my kitchen. So for instance, step one, I'll put the text up here, is very confusing. So what we're going to be doing in lieu of step one, because I don't have that many pots and can't have that much boiling water going for a one gallon batch as the White House honey recipe is set for a five gallon, what I'm going to do is I've got all my lovely malts here and our grains and we're going to be boiling them in about two cups of water, which is the 2.25 quarts scaled down for uh, a one gallon batch. And then essentially what they want us to do is to sparge, which as I mentioned in my previous video, link somewhere here, um, is essentially just a slow process of pouring hot to near boiling water slowly over the grains into your, uh, into your concentrated wort, which is the liquid at the bottom that's been boiling with the grains. So we're going to get that boiling in about two cups of water and then we're going to be sparging the rest using the method that I used in my last video where I use my electric kettle and slowly pour it over the grains into my large uh, pot into my large pot here. So like I said, I've got my lovely grains all ready and let's get into this. Not a good pan for this. Just boiling two cups. So I think what I should do. Should I just boil it and then? But it needs to oh, okay. boil and then steep with this for 45 minutes and then we do sparging. So I think we should actually put it into this small. Small pot. Like small in comparison. I mean, it should be fine. Okay. Are you worried about the pot? Do you want to scrub it? Yeah, that's probably a good thing. I, I hope it's good for everyone. Okay. Yeah, it's probably a good thing. Okie dokie. So, we have our water in our small pot and it has reached the appropriate temperature of 168. So now we are going to add in our malt in our grains, which we've scaled down for the one gallon batch. So we have uh, 3.2 ounces of the Crystal 20 malt. We have 2.4 ounces of the Munich malt. We have 0.6 ounces of chocolate malt, which we're using for our porter. Give it that nice chocolatey flavor. 
And we're also using 1.2 ounces of the black malt, which again is used for dark beers like our porter. So I am going to open these, wrap them all in a cheesecloth like we do, and then we're gonna let that steep in our small pot for about 45 minutes, and then we will begin the sparge. Just like All righty, so we're back. We've let our grains steep in the water at about 155 for 45 minutes per the instructions. And now it is time for the second step of part two. Um, no. And now it's time for the second step of the first set of directions, which is the sparging. And a reminder for my lovelies, in case you haven't seen our earlier brew videos, sparging is the art of slowly pouring boiling water over the grains to really pull out all that sweet, sweet, delicious flavor after we've already created the wort. So our five gallon recipe calls for two gallons of boiling water to be sparged over the grains and into the wort at the bottom of this lovely large pot. But since we're doing one gallon, we're gonna scale that down for one, which is just a little bit over uh, one liter. So it's gonna be like 1.2 liters, which is the measurement using in our electric kettle, which I'm sure you can hear going off. So we've got our strainer. I'm going to be moving the cheesecloth filled with grains into the strainer. We're going to pour the wort in and then we're going to slowly pour in that boiling water that hasn't touched any of the grains or hops or malt or anything. And then once we have that in, we will bring it to a boil, add the rest of our malt and our honey, and then we will continue the process. Alrighty, let's get into it. sparging we're going to add 1.3 pounds of our liquid malt extract and then we're going to add 3.2 ounces of our locally sourced honey and then we're going to bring that up to a boil so it's about half of what i have left in here so what i'm going to do because this is really sticky if you can't tell by the way it's dripping all over the outside is i'm going to pour a little bit in have it dissolve weigh it on my food scale, and then come back until it's about half of what the original weight was that I had set it at, which for me was like 2.48 pounds.
So while we bring this up to a boil, I'm going to talk about why um, when brewing with honey, I actually don't want to put the 3.2 ounces in, like I said I was going to right now, even though that's what the recipe says. All right, so, so referring to my wonderful partner's handy dandy notebook of notes that we took, he took, I didn't take them, I was sleeping. Um, <laughs> During our most recent Cerveceros meeting where we had the wonderful opportunity to talk to Keith from the National Honey Board about brewing with honey and when and where you should put the honey in your brew depending on the outcome that you want. So for the Obama Honey Ale and the White House Honey Porter recipes, they talk about putting it in on the hot side because they want all that sweet, sweet flavor to cook out. So they want you to have that little hint of honey taste but it's not really going to affect your ABV content and you're not really going to get that honey sweetness because that's going to be all boiled out as you can hear rumbling right now. Now, me, I like sweet things. So what we're going to be doing is adding our honey at the cold side of the fermentation. And so I think what we're going to do, uh, what we did last time was we did about half and half. We did half per the recipe and then half during the cold stage. And when you're adding honey to the cold side of the brew, it's very important of when during those fermentation stages you add it. So for instance, uh, when we did the White House Honey Ale, we hadn't gotten to chat with Keith yet. So what we did was we did half of our honey uh, during the last minute of the boil per the recipe. And then we added the other half of the honey directly into the fermenter right after pitching the yeast. and. Uh, exactly like uh, Keith had said. When you add the honey right then, the yeast goes wild. It goes through those simple sugars in the honey first and it overproduces and our beer foamed over and we had to have it drip out. And so we don't know how it's gonna turn out yet, but fingers crossed it won't be terrible. Um, and so when that happens, the yeast goes crazy, it overproduces and then it gets tired and it doesn't have the energy to break down those more complex sugars which is what gives the beer its palatable and potable flavor. Um, so we're hoping that it doesn't become a complete disaster when we moved it to the second stage of fermentation and then bottling. We did a taste at each stage of the process and it tasted like it was gonna be fine. So good news, we didn't ruin our brew, but for those of you who wanna add it to the cold side so you get that honey flavor, like I'm going to be using a locally sourced orange blossom honey, so I really want those flavors to pop when I add it to my porter brew. So I'm going to add that at the second stage of fermentation, which for people who haven't done a two-stage ferment before, is when we take it out of that first big fermenter that you've seen me do in the videos, and we move it to a secondary glass fermenter and reseal it. So that way we remove a lot of that yeast cake, which is that bunch of sediment on the bottom of your fermenter, so that way it really clarifies the beer and it prevents any yeast from becoming overactive and starting to break down a little bit too much uh, and giving your beer a really off flavor. So what we're gonna be doing for the porter today is I think we're gonna do a one third in the hot side at the last minute of boil and then the other two thirds in the second stage of fermentation. So that way we get a little bit of the flavor hints from the hot side and we get the sweetness and the actual honey flavor from the cold side at. So yeah, it sounds like it's boiling. So we're gonna get to the boil stages now. Not quite, almost. It smells so good, you guys, I can't. Ooh, beer facial. Mm. Okay. So it's almost to a boil, but not quite. Once it hits that boil, I'm gonna set my timer for an hour. At the 15 minute mark, we add our first half of the bittering hops. At the 30 minute mark, we add the second half. And then at the 45 minute mark, we add our aromatic hops. And then we will be tossing in the last little bit of aromatics and the honey at that final minute of boil. And then we're gonna go ahead and continue with cooling down the brew and preparing it to go into the fermenter. Alrighty, my lovelies, I'll see you in a little while. Alrighty, so we've reached the 15 minute mark into our brew, so now it's time to add the first half of our bittering hops. 
and the recipe calls for bittering hops that are 10 HBUs. So we went with the Golding's hops. And it's really up to you which kind you want so long as they have 10 HBUs. And if you're not sure which ones to get, go ahead and ask your local brew shop. And odds are, if you start listing things off from a very well-known recipe like, say, the White House Honey Porter, odds are they'll do what our home brew shop did and stop you and say, are you, are you brewing the Obama beers? And you say yes. And then they'll be like, we know what to get you. Just let us know whether you're doing a one or five gallon brew and then they'll go ahead and get everything ready for you if you call in your order like we did. So I'm gonna add half now and then half at the 30 minute mark. So here we go. So we've reached the 30 minute mark in our boil, so now it's time to add the other half of our bittering hops, which as I mentioned before, are 10 HBUs, which is a unit of measurement to measure the bitterness of hops. So these are relatively not that bitter, it's a really low rating. So like I said, we went with the Golding's hops, as was recommended by our Monrovia homebrew shop. Shout out, hey! Um, but definitely go with whatever is recommended for your brew, and if you're not sure, as I mentioned, always feel free to ask your local homebrew shop for their recommendations. It's what they're there for. They like helping people with these kind of questions and the opportunity to teach you more about beer. So, we're going to add these, and then we're going to come back at the very last minute of the boil to add our aromatic hops, which are the Hollertel hops, and then we're going to do one third of our pre-measured honey and then we're going to do the other two thirds at the cold side so that way we get the benefits of both the hot and cold side additions to honey in our brew. in our previous videos you do the first part of the boil to trap in all those flavors but now we don't want to lock in the rest of those of that bitterness from the hops so we're going to leave it on an open boil for the last 30 minutes and then we will come back and add the honey and the aromatic hops so i will see you in about half an hour Alrighty, our hour-long brew has reached its final moments so we are going to add our aromatic hops and a third, so I'm going to do 1.2 ounces into the hot brew and then just 2 ounces into the cold section when we do our second stage fermentation uh, so we get all those lovely misses. So that's roughly about one and a half tablespoons for people who are trying to measure it out. So here we go. Okay, we'll do double videos. Ow, hot, hot. Yeah, Fun right. fact, hot metal from a boiling pot is hot. Don't touch. Which means uh, the pot holder that's right next to you. Yeah, why didn't I use the pot holder that's right next to me? It's because, um, it's because my brain is not here today, guys. All right, so we have one tablespoon. <laughs> to follow the instructions on the recipe, which is to um, strain the hot wort into the fermenter and then add chilled water until it reaches our desired gallonage and then put it in an ice bath so we can pitch the yeast.
nope, nope, we're just doing it like the parents from Cow and Chicken. You're only going to see my legs. <laughs> um, so we've prepared our fermenter and the filter and funnel with the sani water because everything that touches the beer post boil must be sanitized. So now we're going to follow the instructions where we pour in the hot wort to the fermenter and then we top off with chilled filtered water until we reach the top of the fermenter. And then once we finish filling the fermenter, we're gonna put it in an ice bath until the beer reaches about 70 to 80 degrees, and then it'll be time to pitch the yeast. So I'm going to briefly go over how we do that with my hydrometer, which you can pick up at any homebrew shop. It's also available at Target and Walmart online. So you take your wort, which is your unalcoholed beer. All right, so we've filled our beaker uh, up to just about two inches before the top with our wort, which is our unfinished, unalcoholed beer. And then you're going to drop the hydrometer in. So after we give it a spin, it'll stop, and that'll give us our original gravity, which is the first reading. And so looking at the side of the hydrometer that has the numbers between 1.0 and 1.6, ours is currently stopped at 1.3. So 1.3 or maybe even 1.31 is going to be our original gravity for this particular brew. And the way you calculate your ABV, which is your alcohol by volume, is going to be by taking this measurement here, our original gravity. We're gonna repeat this once our fermentation is done, and that's gonna be our final gravity. We subtract the original gravity from the final gravity, and we multiply it by our magical number, which I'll have on screen somewhere, and that's gonna give you your alcohol by volume or the alcohol percentage in your beer. But for now, now that we've got our gravity measured, we can return this beer because everything has been sanitized and there's relatively little chance for contamination from outside bacteria. Back to our fermenter, we're going to pitch our yeast. And because we're doing a one gallon brew, it is widely accepted that we do not need to rehydrate our dry yeast for a one gallon brew. We can just throw the whole packet right in there. And then we will be done for our first main stage of brewing for our White House Honey Porter. All right, lovelies, let's get pitching. transferring our primary fermentation into the secondary fermenter, which is just an empty fermenter. And we suck all of the beer out and leave all of the yeast cake in. Then we bottle a few weeks after that. And then as soon as this is ready to taste, we will be coming back at you with a part two for this video. So until then, my lovelies, stay safe, stay home, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next time.